Hello and welcome to the May edition of Cycling Weekly's Tech of the Month. And we've got a bit of a special on our hands, or should I say our feet, uh, because we've got a shoe special for you guys here. And as you can see, we've got a trio. Three pairs. Of Three shoes. pairs, that is, that's a trio. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we've got that. Not much gets past me, viewers. No, it doesn't, actually. Uh, so, James, mm. you're going to kick us off with I your am. brightly coloured kick us off. Yes. Euros. And as many shoe related puns, puns as possible, is really, today. Yes. Um, these are Giro's, or Giro's, Giro, 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 Giro's yeah. Techne. So, this. Techne. Techne. Yes, not techno, techne. Is they are a bit techno. They are, <laughs> yeah. Um, these are their entry level shoe. So this is a bit of a difference for us. We've actually gone down to the, the lowest end here. Um, and the great thing is, is it is a shoe that shares some of the technology with the higher end stuff. And you've is that got the a few trickle features. down effect. The trickle down effect. We, we love, love tri trickle, love down. trickle down. We love do. Down we do. And that's the best thing about like when you have like sort of shoe companies. It comes down to this level. And the best thing about it is the most important feature is definitely present, and that's the comfort. Yes, I mean, you know, around this this price point, you mm. kind of performance needs to be there. You need to, you can't have your toes bending over the, no. the pedals. But yes, comfort is one of the key things at a lower price point. Not because, you know, you shouldn't be, you know, a stiff sole, etc. but you're going to spend a long time in the shoes. So you need to be comfortable. Absolutely. And especially when we're looking at a pair of shoes that is going to appeal to people new to the sport as well, where they don't, you don't necessarily need to have the stiffest of soles. You just want to have that comfort so you can finish a ride, still be able to walk, and still be able to walk the next day as well, which is the important thing. So a couple of features of it. It's the classic three Velcro strap arrangements to keep it in place. So it doesn't quite have the same level of like micro adjustment as you get on the higher stuff, but it's super comfy and really light as well. So it does bring down the weight. So that's a good option here. And the nice thing with this particular shoe is it's a really long strap. Massive, There's nothing worse than having straps that are the too short. So when you actually put your foot in it, it's kind of like just a tiny bit hold, yeah. holding on. Um, but the other good thing is it's not too, too long. So Yeah, because I always struggle because I like to really yeah. whack my shoe tightness up. So I always have a little bit of a yeah. Velcro flap. And if you have I a bit... Have to mm, I always have a real problem. I do that at the very beginning of a ride and then 10K in, I can't feel my feet anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I, have to stop and I have to stop and redo it. Yeah, so it's, it's kind of like it's a really good arrangement on this shoe. Um, it's nicely panelled as well. So you've got a bit of movement, a bit of flex in here. It's still uh, a, like a synthetic upper. So it should sort of shrug off a few sort of like bumps and scrapes, but it's got a lot of ventilation as well. So it's not it's really a shoe for well winter, vented, but you've it? got, yeah. yeah. And there's a bit of perforations on the, the upper here as well, which does a little bit. A little bit. A huge, huge amount on there. So what are the weight of these shoes? So these ones weigh in at 301 grams for per SRIs. shoe, size 44. That is, uh, that is fairly weighty. It is fairly weighty, but in all fairness, it's not a lot. Of weight when you compare it to say for example the techno lace so the 300 pound shoe that weighs around about sort of like 240 grams per shoe so you know with 60 grams you don't notice it massively on there um it's a nylon sole so there's a good level of stiffness like if you compare this to a carbon shoe from like five years ago it's probably about the same level of stiffness um, and the other good thing with these is it not only takes the standard three bolt, but it's also got the two bolt. So if you want a more walkable cleat or you want a shoe that you can use for spinning as well, then this will accept that, which you don't tend to get on the more sort of pricier points because yep. that's probably one of the areas where it does add a bit of weight because you've got an extra little metal bit yep. in here as well. But the best thing is the price. So these are... 89.99. Really? Wow, yeah. okay. That's so it is it is a good price. Uh, you know, it's still a relatively big amount of money for a pair of shoes, but for a cycling shoe that's actually a really really good point. For a good cycling shoe, mm -hmm. not just, you know, any old no. flimsical thing. Um, and Jira have been producing some really nice shoes of late, especially at the high end. Yeah. Um, but it's nice to see that coming back down to the lower end at, you know, 80 quid that is that is amazing, I think. Mm. Thank you, James. Um, we've got the price and weight of those, which is very competitive for 80-odd yes. quid. Um, so, viewers, uh, Rupert Radley is coming in here with a um, very expensive pair of shoes. 
representing uh, the top end in this shoe special. <laughs> Thank you, Simon Lewis, before you badmouth my product. Uh, so these are higher end, much higher end, but not at the very top end of the cycling shoe market, which is actually considerably more expensive than these that, shoes. That post keeps being moved, it does, doesn't it? It does, so, especially know, in the last year and year or so. We talk about been, five years ago, oh, yeah. 150 quid, 200 quid was a lot of money for shoes, and super high end has gone 300, 350. 450 well, for the likes of Specialized. And then you've like, got the Mavic ones at nearly a thousand pounds and stuff. Yeah. Going, for a pair of shoes. So when you caveat it with that, these actually look like really good value for money. <laughs> but they are a lot more expensive than the other two shoes on this table. But we thought it was good to represent what you can get if you spend a bit more money. These are a great pair of shoes. And they're also a very exciting product because these are Rafa's new shoes, which launched about a month and a bit ago now, I think. Um, and they're exciting because these are a real step change for Rafa because it is all of their own work. So before they were using Giro. Eastern, um, Eastern soles yeah. from Giro, basically. Giro. Yeah. So they were basically using a kind of repurposed empire type thing. Yeah. Um, so it was mostly done with Giro's expertise, but they've taken it in house now and they've designed this, which is the Rafa classic shoe. So it sits in their classic range, which I think everybody knows and we really like. Um, and it's a really, really good shoe. So I've been riding in this for about a month now. You can and see that, mate. Yeah, yeah, I know. I've not, I've not looked after them particularly well. Need to give them a bit of, bit of love, I think. But, you know, shows I have been riding. Thank you, Simon. <laughs> and like these, these are all looking very clean indeed. We look after our kids. <laughs> um, but these are a great shoe. So they've got a um, kind of like a micro, synthetic microfiber upper, as uh, like both of these shoes Pretty do, similar, actually, yeah. I think. And there's lots of perforations on there to help keep your feet cool. Um, but these cost £180. So they are expensive shoes, which you would expect from Rafa. Yeah. So no surprises there, really. But they're not as expensive as those real high-end ones that we mentioned before. Most notably, these are a lace-up system, which look really cool. Again, they do look really, really not good. really a surprise from Rafa, who yeah. have always kind of put a kind of a premium on getting the nice aesthetic down. So expected lace-ups, but these are a double-walled lace-up, so it tightens from both sides, and actually is really impressive. It does create a really nice closure over the top of the foot. It's very, very comfortable. Um, and very easy to get on with, really. I haven't found that I've been over tightening them too much at the start of a ride. That's hard graft, mate, you're smelling there. <laughs> hard <laughs> hard <laughs> kilometres right there. Wow. Um, it is a carbon sole, so unlike uh, both of your shoes yeah. here, this is a carbon, it was a carbon plate in the shoe. It is a full length carbon plate. Yeah, because it looks like it's almost like a double layer, doesn't it? It is. You're very observant, James Bracey. It is a double layer, so they have this sort of uh, rubber edge to it to protect yeah. it from scuffs. Cause That's cool. One, you, you noted this earlier when we were yeah. sat discussing this, that one of the most annoying things when you spend a lot of money on shoes is that you do your first ride, you get off your bike and you look down and you're like, well, they're scuffed a bit absolutely now, wrecked. absolutely <laughs> ruined already. It takes one walk off the bike in a cafe and you've scuffed them. So mm. that is a really nice touch from Rafa. And you can see all, all the wear that they've got. They've been protecting the sole really well. Um, it does add weight. So these are 314 grams a shoe in a size 43. Right. So they are heavy. They're yes, heavier than these. They are heavier than those, exactly. So it is a... It just shows that there's a balance with these things. So these are heavy. They're not quite as performance. It's a carbon plate, but it's not probably not as stiff as you would get from like Specialized or yeah. Giro's top end shoes. Um, so they're more comfortable, but they are more heavy. Mm. I am going to go next, and I have a pair of physiques, like I mentioned a minute ago, and they're these, the Tempo Power Strap. Oh, Power strap. Oh, <laughs> um, again, as you could probably guess, these are coming in at more of the value end of the market, like James, unlike Rupert. Um, and uh, they come with Velcro strap um, when you get down to the lower ends of, of the price point. So these are £109.99. Uh, and I think they look stunning. They're, I mean, they're designed in a way which doesn't make them look entry level at they all. They look does stunning. It? Yeah. So, Physique have been doing this over the years. A couple of years ago, I tested uh, a pair of their RB3s mm. or R3Bs. Um, and they were 120 quid at the time. And it was kind of an entry level point shoe with a. Uh, nylon composite sole which this has as well but they looked great 
And I think Physique have like sort of cornered the market there. Of, you don't want to spend a lot of money. We'll give you comfort and the best looking shoes Style. at that yeah. point. Uh, and I think that's a very, very good thing they're doing. And I think these look great. When I first saw them, I, I think I saw like a side on view of them on, on a website. And I was like, well, I'm not sure about those. But then I stuck them on and I was you know, looking at straps going, actually, they look pretty sweet and they don't really look like anything else um, on the market. To be no, because it's, it's gone away from that, like the, the s traditional strap yeah. ones here, isn't yeah. it? And then so you were saying with your adjustment on, on the Giros, you know, it, it takes a bit of going. It's, you don't get that micro adjustment. Mm -hmm. But Physique say with their uh, closure uh, system here uh, that you should be able to sort of really adjust it to your foot. Okay. Uh, and they go on to say that it should replicate Physique's volume control system. But it does have that same... Because I was about to say, it is similar, the, the way that it's, it's rooted, I guess, for a better word, the Velcro yeah. is rooted, it is like a, like a boa dial Almost. would be, like yeah. that kind of, with physique, it's that kind of um, affinity shape that it they is. go for. Isn't it, it is, yeah. So they've kind of gone for that there. So, you know, you get your standard big closure system to secure your foot, which you can obviously adjust up and down with um, the Velcro. But this one should be pulling the shoe around the lower foot and kind of giving you that slight more adjustment than you would on maybe three straps over the cross. And they are comfortable, you stick them on and you can adjust them to sort of fit like you want. You know, it, it's not, there's no bow dial, you know, two, two bow dials is of course the kind of go-to set um, of uh, closure systems to, to allow that sort of really small adjustments of, of your fit. You know, maybe, like I like to really tighten mine up but have like the bottom one slightly looser, etc. cetera. Um, I kind of didn't feel like I could get that completely, but for a Velcro system, it is actually very, very good. Um, so sort of some headline figures really. So um, for a size 42, which I am, uh, this weighs 274 grams. And funnily enough, we were weighing these earlier. Both shoes weigh exactly the same. Which is quite unusual. That is very Very, unusual, very it? unusual. Yeah. It might sound silly, but we, we took them off the scale, put them back on the scale, took them off the scale, put them back, and it's like, they both weigh exactly yeah. 274 grams, which I think is uh, remarkable, really. Well done, Physique, for doing that. However, Size 42 on Physique's website does state that they weigh 250 grams. So that is mathematician. Uh, a big difference. A big difference. Yeah, 27 absolutely. grams <laughs> difference. Um, which, 27 grams is not a lot. Grams. 24 grams. 24 grams, sorry. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's kind of... It's a packet of crisps, right? Mm. But they've got to get it right. And I'm sure they That's weigh a, them. I was going to say, it's a big Depends how they weigh them. It is, yeah. it is quite a big difference. So, I mean, again, um, I think we, we regularly say this in our reviews. It's kind of, we, we weigh everything de independently on our scales. They might come up slightly different, but maybe a few grams either side. But 24 grams is, is a lot. Yeah. As I say, £109.99. Uh, so they're sort of lighter than uh, both your shoes and sort of in the middle of, of both their price points. So I think Physique have done a good job with that. They look wicked They do well. look They're wicked. very nice. Um, so as I say, it's a nylon composite sole um, and you get them from 36 to 48 uh, in terms of sizes good. with half sizes between 37 and 47. Um, so you get you don't get the half size on the mm. extremes. Uh, and I like them. I think they're a great, great pair of shoes. I mean, comfort, relatively cheap, just above the £100 price point. You can't, can't really argue with that. You, you could ride around on a £5,000 bike with a pair of £100 shoes and not actually feel out of place. No. Whereas, you know, that, that, and, that's, and people wouldn't even question it either. Thanks, guys. That concludes us for our shoe special uh, this month. Three very good shoes, I think, at kind of different sort of placings in the market, really. Um, very good looking. Very value for money, and Rupert Bradley's rougher shoes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but we haven't finished just yet because we are, of course, going to Bike of the Month, and it is the Giant Contend. One. One. £999 of pure joy. One pound under the grand mark. Cycle for work scheme. Cycling to work, yep. Yes, yes, it would be ideal for that. I've been riding this bike and I just really liked it. It was a sort of no frills, but you get a very good bike. Bike, which I think you should expect around the thousand pound price point, right? Um, so what the, 
the best thing really about it was the fact that it was super comfortable. It was just so comfortable over every kind of road surface. It's hard to, to really sort of pinpoint down exactly what it was, but it does have super wide tires. Those um, are huge. Uh, the first thing I noticed when I looked at that bike, I was like, Whoa, yeah, they are 28s. They are massive. The 28Cs, yeah, yeah. but they, they look really big. Um, and it's almost like road tires, right? You get like kind of, you either really get the really narrow tread or quite the thick tread, and they look like they've got really thick tread compared to some others. But I think it is just the, the black on black, really, with the silver in the middle, making well, that. Also, uh, they're, like, they're, they're Giants own tires, but they're like um, a front and rear specific tire yeah, as well. Yeah. And like I said, that extra air volume is going to give you that nice little sort of smooth yes. ride, isn't it? Um, so it was a weird one, really. And I mean, the bike is heavy. It's just over nine kilos, um, which isn't super, super duper heavy, but it is it is quite on the weighty side. And I didn't really notice that it was it was a weird riding sensation, um, mainly because it's got a compact on there, it's a 50 front chain ring. And look at that cassette, it's absolutely humongous. So that kind of counteracts um, the weight balance there for me, um, which is quite a smart thing with um, Giant and what they've done with the Contend. Um, as you can see, it's got super high at front end. Um, that, that for, for a small bike, which is what it is, and for my size, that is quite a, a meaty head tube there. And you notice that, uh, and they do supply it, and I've got it here, with a 90 mil stem, which I was discussing with James Bracey this morning. I was going, that's way too short, but he was like, well, maybe for the size and for the type of rider using it, it's, it's appropriate, right? And um, I had to put a 120 on to sort of get it to how I wanted it to, to fit, um, which didn't really change too much in terms of the way it felt. And I was saying to you, um, I was doing some sort of faster paced efforts on it and it just handles so nicely. It's not, it's, <laughs> It's one of those difficult things to explain. It's not like a really fun, fast bike and you're on the edge, but you just literally lean it in and it would just track around. It's, like um, it's, it's Yes, that cliche of like it's on rails. Yeah. It's kind of, there was a few points where I was like, right, I'm just gonna go for it and see what happens. And I literally just sort of turned the front end in and you know on some bikes, especially with the large volume tires, it kind of, it kind of goes in, you don't know where you are. And yeah. then suddenly you're like, oh yeah, this is really nice. And one bike that kind of really does it like that is the road machine from BMC, such a long wheelbase. You sort of dip it in, you go, no idea if this is gonna happen or gonna work or I'm gonna go straight on. And then suddenly you're just like, dig into the big curve, the wide, uh, uh, long wheelbase kind of t tracks you around. It's kind of like that, um, but you don't get the, the funny sort of slight turn in phase of like, don't know where it is, you're, you're straight. Once you're in the arc, you're like, it tracks around beautifully. Uh, and that, again, is a mixture of geometry and the big tires. Um, you get a partial 105 uh, group set, because I don't think that chain set is a 105. No, that's the non-standard one, isn't it? But it looks really nice, though. It matches, it's just at least. plain black, yeah. Because sometimes those non-standard chain sets are kind of, you know it's not what you want, really. So it's nice that Shimano and Giant have spec'd um, a sort of nondescript chain set. Uh, and you get a carbon alley mix fork um, with, with mudguard eyelets on there as well mudguard eyelets and uh, that diffuse composite seat post as well has done a very good job at looking after my rear and it's it's just an all-round comfortable bike you don't get any road buzz um, you know you don't get the frills and spills of a sort of edgy race bike but it does everything you want it to do um, I mean one thing I found with the contend it's it's happy as Larry around you know 20 to 30, maybe even 35k an hour. And there was points where I knew roads should have been a bit more, bit more flowy, a bit more free, freewheeling, and kind of, you know, rewarding me for my efforts to getting up there. Um, and you probably can get up to 40k without too much steam on those sort of faster roads. Anything above that, you, you start to notice it isn't a race bike, it isn't an aero bike, it hasn't got all those trinkets to help you go faster. But that's not, it's kind of not that bike to, to be pushing at those speeds, I don't think. You can reach those speeds. I mean, there's a few points on a few of the more descents hit, hitting 50K an hour. You know, the bike just remained the same. It wasn't, it, at any point during that speed range, it didn't change characteristics. That's where you get like the, the like these, the added weight of like a, it's like a lower spec mm. bike tends to actually be a benefit in those situations yeah. because it adds stability to it. And it gives you that nice sort of like sort of almost predictable ride feel yeah. all the way through no matter what you're trying to yeah. do yeah yeah and there's a few points where i thought right as i was saying chuck it into some corners at some decent speed and it doesn't do anything that would warrant any any worry or concern you know there's no 
you know, oh, the tyres are squealing a little bit, or you know, there's a little bit washout, or I don't know where I am. It's kind of it was so assured and so sort of set in its in its path where I wanted it to go. It was it was great. There you have it, Giant Contend uh, One for our Bike of the Month and. That kind of concludes us for both parts of Bike of the Month and Tech of the Month. If there's another sort of special Tech of the Month you'd like us to do, please do leave a comment in the comment section below telling us what kind of products you want us to focus on. But until next time, we'll see you then.